There's a lot of debate on whether or not evolution is real. Some say that it's fact and others say that it's fiction. Personally, I'm someone who completely believes in evolution and I think it's fascinating. So I've compiled a list of evidence that further suggests that the theory of evolution really is true and I'm going to share it with you guys today as we count down the top 10 evolution evidences you cannot deny. At number 10, transitional fossils. For many scientists, fossils are their most important pieces of evidence to help put together the stories of our past. From fossils of ancient human remains to those of dinosaurs and other extinct creatures, these fossils can tell us a lot about the past. The best of these fossils, however, are the ones who demonstrate the transitions between different species. Transitional fossils are the ones that show the evolution between an ancestral form of one species and how their descendants changed over time. The best example of this comes from whales. We all know what whales look like. They're big aquatic mammals with blowholes on the top of their heads, but we have real evidence that shows just how these animals evolved over millions of years through transitional fossils. If you go back in time, there were two distinct fossils that demonstrate the whales transition. The fossilized remains of Adiocetus and Pachycetus show how whales evolved from land mammals. The Pachycetus was a quadruped land mammal with their nose on the front of their faces. Over time, this mammal evolved into a seafaring mammal, and at this point, their noses started to shift upwards as they adapted to the water. At this point, it was in the middle of their noses, but finally, when you look at whales, you see that these old nostrils have shifted to the top of their heads and have become blowholes. We know all about this transition thanks to fossils, so they show a good example of evolution at its finest. At number 9, the fossil record. Some people try to disprove evolution because they've never seen these ancient beings people are going on about. But thanks to the fossil record, we have this proof and it helps us piece together the story of our planet, when things happened, where they happened, and who they happened to. The fossil record is one of the best pieces of evidence that we have to go off, and these ancient remains really tell us a lot. Based on where in the earth you find the fossils, it can tell you an approximate date of when these things died, and when testing the remains and soil around it, scientists can also determine what the area's environment could have looked like. We are also able to piece together these beings place in the evolutionary timeline. Based on their physical characteristics, where they were found, and the approximate dating of their remains, scientists can figure out what point in time they were from, who they might have evolved from, and in some cases, what might have come afterwards as well. We get the bulk of our information from the fossil record and that's pretty important to the story of our evolution because without it, we'd have nothing. Now before I carry on with the video, I would like to take a moment to ask you guys to consider leaving a like on this video to help the channel out and maybe subscribe as well to join the fun and join the hive. At number 8, Common Anatomy. It is believed that we all come from a common ancestor, someone who came before all of us who passed on their traits over the years. Based on the theory of evolution, we can see evidence of this common ancestor through common anatomy we share with other creatures. Take for example our bone structures, our limbs, specifically our arms. They share similarities with other animals on this earth. For example, a bat wing, mouse arm, and even whale fin all have the same characteristics. This is because we share a common vertebrate ancestor, and through evolution among other factors, we were able to branch off into our own species, while still retaining some common anatomical characteristics that link us back to our ancient spawn point, if you will. If these anatomical similarities were created by accident, then that would be one hell of a coincidence because the chances of so many different species all sharing a specific common anatomical trait is incredibly minuscule. At number 7, Molecular Biology. I just talked about how it is believed that we all share a common ancestor. I mentioned the anatomical side of things and how physical attributes give us evidence to support the evolution of life on this planet, but let's talk about the little things that connect us. And by little, I mean really little. The genetic code of every living organism is made up of the same 20 amino acids and this also can't be a coincidence. DNA sequencing proves that all living things Things share the same DNA. It is further evidence to support the theory of evolution. On top of that, our DNA also carries a lot of information from the past, and thanks to modern technology and developments in DNA research, it has become possible to use the genes of various living organisms to reconstruct the evolutionary history of these organisms. So in a way, we are able to use DNA to take a trip backwards in time to learn about how said organisms got to where they are today. If evolution wasn't real, then this process wouldn't be possible. At number 6, pseudogenes. On the top of DNA, however, let's talk about pseudogenes. 
Pseudogenes are remnants of genes that no longer serve a function, but continue to be passed along in our DNA, sort of like excess baggage. These genes, though not useful to us physically, are still able to change throughout time, picking up more information the further down the line you go. They're passed down through your ancestors, and they give us a lot of useful information about your lineage, and are also able to help researchers reconstruct evolutionary relationships. For example, it is because of these pseudogenes that we are able to figure out that certain people have remnants of Neanderthal and or Denisovan DNA in their systems. And this can further explain to scientists when these bonds happened, and even sometimes where they happened. If it weren't for evolution, we wouldn't be able to get these answers, since these pseudogenes wouldn't have existed. At number 5, dogs. I would call myself a dog lover, and I'm sure a lot of scientists would say they love dogs too, because they give us a prime example of evolution. There are so many dog breeds out there, from the biggest and furriest to the tiniest little babies. Looking at dogs today, it's hard to imagine that they all came from one common ancestor, the wolf. But how did this happen? Well, through evolution, of course. Over the years, humans have had a huge influence on canines. We domesticated them thousands of years ago, but we also bred them to fit our desires, and that's how we got to have so many different breeds of dogs that we have today. Over the years, people bred bigger and bigger dogs, and they evolved into breeds like Great Danes. We bred smaller and smaller dogs, and that's how we got breeds like Chihuahuas. And we bred specialized dogs like Greyhounds in the same way. We used dogs to fit our needs, and we caused their evolution. Over time, the traits that humans found desirable were kept and passed down through the puppies, and the traits that were undesirable were bred out. It's that simple, and it's evolution. At number 4, behavior. Through evolution, many things change, and yet some things still stay the same. I've talked a lot about the physical aspects of evolution, but what about the psychological? Because that is also a huge part of evolution as well. As humans, it is known that we evolved millions of years ago from primates, and yet even through all that time, a lot of our behavior stayed the same. For example, we share a lot of similarities between the way that we socialize and the way that primates socialize. Many primates live in social groups like a family, and we've kept up that same behavior all this time. Though young primates take shorter time to reach maturity, we still raise our young pretty similarly, nurturing their growth and curiosity and promoting their socialization amongst the others in their group. Another example of our similarities with our primate ancestors is our use of tools. Yes, we are far more advanced in our technology these days, but in the early days of humankind, we used tools similar to those of primates. There is physical evidence to support this as some ancient human tools have been found. Both humans and apes have been known to use tools like stones and sticks to do their tasks. So even though that might not be the case in these modern times, we all started off the same way. The only difference is that as we have evolved our intelligence and therefore our tools evolved with us. At number 3, location. Believe it or not, location has a lot to do with evolution. Depending on where an organism is, this affects the way that they adapt to their surroundings and therefore the way that they evolve. One of the greatest examples of this comes from the greenish warbler from the Himalayas. Scientists believe that this species of bird migrated from the south of the Himalayas to the north. Some birds migrating traveling west around the mountains and others traveling east. Over time, these birds began to evolve and adapt to their surroundings. They evolved so much that by the time time both birds migrated to the north of the mountains, they were so different from one another that they were no longer able to mate. Remember, they started off as the same species and over time they diverged, becoming too biologically different from one another. Their evolution was heavily based on their environment and this sort of thing happens all over the world. That's why one tortoise from the Galapagos Islands would be very different from a tortoise from North America. They're both the same species, but also completely different from one another due to where they come from. At number 2, Embryology. Embryology is a study of biological development from the time of conception, and is yet another source of evidence to support the theory of evolution. Through studying the embryos of various organisms, it's been discovered that embryos of various species within a class are similar even if their adult forms look nothing alike. So for example, when you compare the embryo of a human to one of a chicken, in the very early stages of their development, they look very similar. On top of that, because such a wide variety of organisms, from fruit flies to worms to mice to humans, have very similar sequences of genes that are active early in development, and since these genes influence the way bodies of said organisms develop, the presence of such similar genes doing such similar things across such a wide range of organisms is further evidence to support the theory that we come from a common ancestor. Embryology also goes hand in hand with comparative anatomy because scientists can use these embryos to try and pinpoint more information about our common ancestor and what other traits we might also share. And finally at number 1, observation. The number one argument that a lot of people make when trying to disprove evolution is the fact that they've never seen evolution happen. But really, that's not exactly true. 
Organisms are evolving constantly, but it's just such a slow process that most of us don't notice. But scientists have noticed, and there are a lot of creatures out there that are going through changes right now that we can use to prove the legitimacy of evolution. For example, there are two species of mice who have banded together to try and save their own kind by mating and creating offspring who are increasingly more resistant to pesticides. They're using the process of natural selection to evolve a way to adapt to threats in their environment to keep their species alive. Another example of evolution that is currently happening comes from moths. There is a species of moth that comes in two colors, a white speckly kind of color and black. At first, they were primarily white in color, but as their environment faced pollution from soot from factories in the area, they started to stand out more and more and became easy prey. And so to counteract this, they started breeding with the rarer black colored moths, and over time, they were able to blend in to their soot covered surroundings, prolonging their survival from predators. Pretty cool that we've been able to see this evolution happen right before our eyes. Now before I wrap things up, I want you guys to leave a comment down below saying what your favorite animal is, and if someone out there has a fact about that animal, reply to their comment and get a cool conversation going. Anyways, that's it for me, I've been your host Room, and until next time, stay safe, make good choices, and stay sweet bubble bees.